Hey everyone, this is Keith Schleicher from Gaming Trend and Tabletop Throwdown, and I am here with Rob from White Wizard Thanks. Games, and he is the designer of the Star Realms game, which also has spun off into the Hero Realms game, and we are going to talk about the campaign mode for the Hero Realms uh, game that was kickstarted last year and has been... When was the game originally released, Hero Realms? Uh, so Hero Realms hit, uh, hit stores uh, January this year, basically. Uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, um, and the campaign uh, deck, uh, is, we're, we're scheduling for uh, around Christmas time uh, uh, this year. Um, but we have a print and play uh, that our Kickstarter backers got access to. And we printed it out and brought it here to Origins uh, and are running uh, uh, people through the first chapter of the campaign, the, the first encounter. Uh, and we have some mock-ups of the cards here, and I can, uh, I'm can i going to go over the mechanics and how the play works. Yeah, so the campaign mode is a cooperative game as well. Exactly. Right? So the, what uh, the campaign does is it transforms Hero Realms from a, from a player versus player deck building game to a cooperating game cooperative leveling deck building game. So you and your friends will get together, you each choose a character to play. So you'll need to own the base game, uh, and, you'll, and each player needs to have a character pack. So you can play as the fighter, or the wizard, or the thief, or the ranger, and the cleric, and those are currently available now. You can play those PvP versus each other. But then when you add in the campaign deck, you're playing cooperatively as a party, um, you're gonna be facing uh, encounters, and you're gonna be trying to together defeat the encounter, and if you do, you're gonna get treasure, and you're going to get uh, experience. You can spend your experience to improve your skills, your treasures will be added to your starting deck, and your character will be better and more powerful for the next mission, which is a good thing, because the next missions get harder and harder as you go. Mm -hmm. So, uh can you show me where the uh, campaign deck is and how that goes? Sure. So we have uh, here um, some of the stuff from the print and play. Now the full campaign set is going to be 150 regular size cards plus eight of these uh, extra large uh, master cards. The, the masters are the bad guys that you're fighting against. So, uh, and they're all, they're double sided oh, wow. as you can see. Okay. So um, each encounter you'll be fighting against a different master. Um, in the first encounter, um, the master is these, uh, this enthralled regulars card. You can see here at the top is the master's level. This is the first level version. Um, and over here, uh, this indicates how many cards the master gets each turn. So this, this one gets one. And over here, you've got special abilities the master could get each turn. Now, the master has his own deck. And uh, the way you create, create the master deck, you take the setting cards, they have a little S on the bottom of them, and these mastery cards here, and you'll also need the encounter cards, which will have a number. These, this is the encounter cards for the first encounter. So you take all the encounter cards and all the master cards, and you're going to shuffle those together, and then you're going to take the setting cards, and if you've got five players, you're going to take all the setting cards and shuffle that in there as well. If you've got less than five players, you're going to take out three of these cards at random. You'll shuffle them up and pull three out for every player you're missing. So if you, if you only have three players, you're going to take six of these out uh, at random and then shuffle the remaining into here. So then you'll have the master's deck. Each turn, uh, before a player goes, the master gets a, gets a, to go during that player's turn. So um, if it's my turn, the first thing I would do is I take the master deck, which would be all these cards shuffled up, and uh, that could be here, and I'd flip over the top card of the master's deck. Now, in this case, it's a minion. Um, this, uh, this is basically a monster that's uh, jumping out and attacking me personally. So basically, this minion would go in front of me, and um, and it, before I go, it would get to act. This minion, when it acts, it makes me discard an item card. So basically, I'd look at my hand, and so maybe I'd discard a gold or a fire gem, whichever item I wanted to discard. Um, in addition to that, it's got the red symbol up there. Every card that's flipped on the, from the Master's deck has a colored icon on it and it matches the master's power over here. So in this case, it gives three combat. So the master would get three combat and I would be attacked for three points of damage and this imp would force me to discard an item. Um, 
Then uh, at the end of the master's phase, the master's minions prepare, and then it goes into my turn. Now I could not attack uh, anywhere but this minion, um, which is in front of me, until I've cleared it. Once it's out of the way, then I could go ahead and attack the master, or if I had a friend nearby who was in trouble, they had, uh, they had some minions in front of them, I could attack nearby minions, minions in front of nearby players and, and clear those out of the way. But again, if you've got a minion in front of you, you've got to deal with that first. Now, every single player is going to be on their turn flipping over a card from the master's deck. Uh, eventually, you're going to hit uh, these mastery cards. When a mastery card flips, you're going to resolve the effect from the color, and then the mastery card goes under the master. When the master gets mastery cards equal to the number of gems under their level, they level up, so the card flips over, and, it be, and the master basically becomes much more powerful. So their special abilities get stronger, um, and in this case, this particular master, when he's level two, he flips two cards a turn. What that means is when uh, the master goes at the beginning of the player's turn, instead of flipping over one card off the top of the deck, you flip over two. So things can get really nasty really fast uh, if, the, if the master has leveled up. Um, and... Uh, in this deck, in, in addition to the masteries, there are um, there are action cards. When an action card comes up, you read it, do it, do what it says, and then it goes into the master's discard pile. There are also um, hazards. When a hazard comes up, it will affect the. It stays in front of the player and it affects them. And there's always a way to clear the hazard uh, out of the way. Um, there will be. Uh, minions of uh, varying power levels, so you can see the crazed bartender is much more powerful than the charging drunk. Um, uh, and uh, but there also be elite minions. Elite minions have this elite word next to them, and when an elite minion comes up, instead of going in front of the player, the elite minion goes next to the master's card, and the elite minion gets to attack the player whose turn it is on every single player's turn. So a regular minion goes in front of a specific player, like maybe goes in front of the wizard, and it's attacking that player on that player's turn. Um, but an elite minion goes next to the master and will attack every single player on their turn. So those guys are really nasty. You're gonna wanna take those guys out as quickly as you can. Um, so um, the master is automated. You don't need anyone to play the bad guys. The bad guys are run by the game itself. Um, and the power level of the of the bad guys scales to the number of players you have. So you can play it solo, you can play with two players, three, four, or five. Um, the game works with all those numbers of players. And because you're modifying the number of cards in the setting deck, that adjusts how frequently the mastery cards will come up based on the number of players that you've got. So, and the ultimate objective is to destroy the master. Exactly, and the master has a starting health value, so you can see on the level one here, this particular master starts with 50 health. So you just, uh, you can use the scorecards that come with the base game to track, uh, track the master's health. If you can get the master down to zero, you've defeated that master, uh, and uh, um, you'd uh, earn rewards, yeah. such, as, uh, uh, such as treasure cards, and you might gain experience which you could spend to improve your character skills. Now the uh, campaign's gonna come with uh, skill cards for um, the, uh, all the classes, and basically you have an entire skill tree. So you start out, for example, the, the wizard starts out with a uh, channel and a uh, fireball card. Uh, as you gain experience, you can improve your fireball, though. There's different ways you can take your fireball. There's like a, a rolling fireball, which will hit all the, all the bad guys in your area, but it also then rolls to another area, so you can hit all the bad guys in the master's area as well, or hit all the guys in your area and a friend's, uh, and uh, hit a, all the bad guys in a friend's area as well. Um, or um, there's, you can just increase the damage of your fireball. You get a searing fireball, which does extra damage. And from there, you can choose if you spend another experience point on it, you can each of those choices branch into other choices you can get. So there's an entire skill tree for both your 
uh, sacrifice ability and your uh, activated ability that you can use each turn. Um, so with the experience, you'll be able to choose how you want to improve your character. You might buy additional health for your character. You might improve your existing starting skills. And uh, with those treasures, you're going to be improving the cards in your starting deck. When the game's over, all the cards you bought from the market are going to go back to the market deck ready for your next encounter. But the treasures that you find that improve your starting deck, those you keep, and your character will get better and more powerful over time. Oh, and this really sounds like it's really cooperative instead of having a bunch of people trying to work against the same thing. It sounds like people really need to work together to defeat minions yeah. that may not be in front of them. E but Exactly. So, and, and the order that you put your party matters. So basically, you can help a player if they're ne next to you in the seating, if uh, they're referred to as a nearby player. If they're more than one seat away, you can't help that player. So if you had, like, uh, the fighter, then the wizard, then the thief, then the ranger, the fighter at the begin start of the party, he can only help the thief. But the thief uh, could help the fighter or help the wizard who's next to him, but basically you, you can only help one space over. Uh, so how you seat your players matters, who gets healing in their deck. When you gain health in the campaign, you get to choose whether you personally gain that health or whether you want to give it to a nearby player. So uh, so you can, uh, um, you can uh, uh, support players by taking out the bad guys who are in front of them, uh, certain hazards you might be able to help them clear, and uh, you can also heal, uh, heal them when necessary. And if the group works together, you're gonna to have a much easier time than if everybody's only thinking about their own deck. So, and you said that you are expecting this available at the end of the year? Yeah, so uh, it's at the printer right now. Um, and uh, uh, should, in a couple months, we're, it'll, uh, we're gonna, um, that product will be finished, and then we will uh, airship product for our Kickstarter backers to the US and then, and then ship it out from there. And, for, uh, and then at the same time, we'll put the rest of the remaining product on, the, uh, on a ship, and that's gonna, uh, that'll take a little extra time. So that will be uh, available around Christmas time for in stores and should be about in the beginning of fall, end of summer for our Kickstarter backers. Do you know how much it's going to cost when it ends up in the store? Uh, MSRP is going to be $19.99, uh, and that's going to come with 150 of the uh, regular sized cards and uh, um, eight of these oversized cards, uh, plus a, the rule book and an adventure book, which will guide you through each encounter and give you choices on things you're going to do and which which of the bad guys you fight in the various encounters can sometimes be affected by the choices that you make uh, as you're moving through the adventure. Wow, yeah, and for only 20 bucks, it sounds like it adds quite a bit of gameplay. Oh, it. it's huge. Uh, yeah, basically, uh, we ended up uh, putting a lot, a, a huge amount of time into this product. Uh, uh, there's incredible artwork, tons and tons of gameplay. Uh, Frankly, we probably put a lot more work into it than the $20 MSRP justifies, but it's awesome, and we think you guys are really going to like it. Cool. So another thing that uh, is coming up very shortly is uh, Star Realms, which is the older big brother of Hero Realms, and you're going to be running a new uh, Kickstarter campaign for a... Uh, electronic version of that, right? Uh, actually, the ne we have a Kickstarter campaign coming up next month for the physical Star Realms game. So oh. uh, this is the first time we've done a Kickstarter for Star Realms since the game first came out uh, on Kickstarter uh, about four years ago. So um, this, uh, and the gaming community has grown uh, quite a bit, so we really wanted uh, to create something awesome for uh, the Star Realms fans. We have a, a full box set called Star Realms Frontiers. This is gonna come in a larger box uh, with enough stuff for four players, uh, very similar to the way Hero Realms is packaged. Mm -hmm. um, and it'll have an entirely new trade deck, um, and there's gonna be a bunch of additional cool stuff in this Kickstarter as well. Uh, additional sets, uh, lots of Kickstarter exclusive promo cards, uh, lots of cool extras. Uh, this Kickstarter is happening uh, starting on July 11th. Uh, so that's 7-11, uh, and to start, we're gonna start it up at 11 a.m. So 7-11, 11 a.m., check out the Star Realms Frontiers Kickstarter, uh, and uh, we got a lot of cool stuff there. Yeah, 
to have everything for Star Realms there, and the fact that you're going to have completely new cards for, I mean, you have a lot if you include the Colony Wars uh, standalone game, but to include enough for four players at one time, that's really impressive. Yeah, it's and it's a it's it's a really sweet set. It plays uh, uh, plays really well. Has some new mechanics. Uh, it's a ton of fun. And as always, we've got really gorgeous artwork for it. Uh, and there's a lot of uh, as I said, a lot of cool extras, uh, which we'll uh, wait for the Kickstarter to let people discover. <laughs> and not only that, you have another epic. Uh, uh, expansion or series? Yeah, we've got uh, for Epic Card Game, we have a new 60 card expansion uh, um, called Pantheon uh, and that's going to be coming this fall as well. Um, so uh, Pantheon has uh, uh, some uh, some new mechanics uh, that uh, players haven't seen before, and uh, um, and a lot of new cards. And uh, with uh, with 60 new epic cards, it's going to have a, a really big impact on your uh, on your sealed and draft play, and of course on your constructed decks. Cool. And uh, when's that coming out? Um, that's that's going to be this fall uh, as well. Okay. Cool. And finally, we have Sorcerer from uh, White Wizard Games, and this is an early prototype, and it looks like another card game. What's the objective of Sorcerer? So in Sorcerer, players are playing evil sorcerers vying for control of Victorian London, um, and uh, um, every player in the game is playing a bad guy. There are no good guys in Sorcerer. Um, at the beginning of the game, you are creating a deck uh, using a very simple process, and then you're going to be uh, playing cards, putting, uh, playing minions onto battlefields, uh, battling uh, your opponent's minions, uh, and rolling dice for damage. Uh, so it has kind of a, a trading card game feel and kind of a board game with a tactical board game feel to it uh, melded together. Um, Sorcerer is designed by Peter Schultz, who's the head of White Wizard Games' European team, uh, and he has put a huge amount of work into the uh, the flavor and the background and the art and the visuals for this game. Uh, it's uh, it's really a thing of beauty, and we're really excited to uh, bring this out. Um, it's going to be uh, coming to Kickstarter this fall. Um, and uh, we hit, but we do have our early prototype here, so I can uh, give you a, a quick overview on how the game works. Yeah, and when you say evil, they, the artwork definitely uh, seems to indicate that, or really e yes, get indeed. that point across. So um, the character creation in Sorcerer uh, is uh, is really simple. There are these twelve little mini decks uh, that the game comes with, and at the beginning of the game, um, each player is going to choose. Um, a, a, car, a, a, a pile from this first row, a pile from the second row, and a pile from the third row. Put those three together and that's going to make their deck. So uh, the first rows, these are uh, the Awakened cards. So basically these, uh, these evil sorcerers, uh, their magical uh, powers manifest uh, in something called an Awakening. Uh, and so this will represent who you are. Um, so you see the various character names here. Um, and then uh, the second row is your lineage. So all the sorcerers are descended from uh, ancient evil gods, and depending on which gods you, you are descended from, you'll have different uh, magical powers. Uh, so um, you've got uh, the necromancer, the animalist, the demonologist, or the blood lord. Uh, and then finally is your domain. This is this is where you your area of control, and it'll affect what uh, uh, minions are working for you, and some of the and some of the things that you have access to. So um, we have uh, of the haunted forest, or of the forgotten temple, of the outcast sanctuary, or of the screaming coast. So if you take the um, uh, three of these uh, together, so for example, you might be uh, Tegu the demonologist of the Screaming Coast. So basically you take these cover cards off and you'll put the three of these uh, next to you. And these will be available to you for the game and they give you different special abilities for, uh, for each card. And then you take the remaining cards and you shuffle those up and that creates your deck. So the, um, there's a uh, 
a ton of different options for uh, what your deck could contain, but at the same time, it's super easy and super fast to put together. And when the game's over, it's really easy to sort the cards out because they each have an icon on the bottom of them to show which uh, which of the mini decks they came from. So at the end of the at the end of the game, you can just sort through your cards and very quickly uh, um, put things back the way they were. Now. Uh, each player will also have this game board, um, and this uh, this is a prototype, but the final boards will be um, real board game material, so the nice solid boards. Um, and on there you can track your energy. Your energy is used to play your cards. You can see in the upper uh, corner of the card, uh, they have an energy total there. That's how much this card costs to play. So if I wanted to play this particular minion from my hand, um, and it's my turn, I would uh, reduce my energy by the required cost, and then I could place the minion on any of the three battlefields in the game. Um, now, players go back and forth taking turns. A turn consists of six actions. If I were to play that card, for example, um, I would use up my action and spend my energy, place the card on the battlefield, and then it would be my opponent's action, and basically they could spend an energy uh, or spend an action to uh, and spend energy to play a card, or um, they have a variety of other choices. On your turn, you can uh, um, you can channel energy um, for an action, and that would increase your energy count by two. You can meditate and draw two cards from your deck into your hand. You can cast a spell that's playing a card by paying its energy, like I showed you a minute ago. Um, you can uh, reinforce, and when you do that, you can move minions on the table. So basically, there's these three different battlefields, and you can play minions into them, but during the course of the game, you might need to move your units around, and to do that, you spend your action, and you can move your unit over uh, one space. So if a minion's here, it could go there or there. If it's here, it could go there. Um, if a minion has uh, uh, flying, these, this wing icon, uh, when it moves, it can actually go anywhere on the board. So it can go to uh, from this battlefield all the way over here if it's got those wings. Um, so players go back and forth spending their actions playing cards on the table. The cards might be minions like, uh, like this one or uh, they, uh, you also have sorcery cards. When you play a sorcery, you pay its cost, you do what it says on it, and then it goes to your discard pile. Um, they could be uh, possessions. Um, uh, possessions you would actually play directly onto a minion. So for example, you could play this pistol on uh, to this minion, and you can see that it gives bonuses to the stats, and it also might have a special ability. Um, and so you're going to be uh, playing a variety of cards um, uh, uh, on the game doing, using your actions. And then once uh, the players have uh, are done and they've played minions in various locations um, throughout the uh, um, uh, throughout the board, then you resolve the battles once you've gone down to all six actions. Once the battle phase starts, starting with a player who has initiative, in this case, uh, this player has the initiative point. Um, on the first battlefield, that player would go first. When, a, when they go, they turn a minion sideways to indicate it's going, and then you get to roll dice equal to the, uh, uh, to the minion's offense, in this case, four and then you roll for an effect. A skull is a point of damage. A double skull is two points of damage. If you've got the white side, it's a miss. And if you've got the, a star side, it's a critical hit. So in this case, I, I did six damage. So my opponent would need to assign six damage either to their side of the battlefield or to minions they control or any combination. So for example, they might choose to take three damage on the minion and take three damage on their side of the battlefield. Um, if a minion takes damage equal to its shield, it is destroyed, uh, go to its owner's discard pile. The damage sticks around, so the damage counters that are placed on the minions stay there forever unless someone does something to remove them. So you can a really big, tough minion you can do damage to over time to bring it down. Um, if you can do damage to uh, the opposing battlefield equal to 12, then you've won the battlefield, you flip it over to the uh, destroyed side, and you put a control counter on your side of the battlefield. Um, if you can control two of the three battlefields, uh, you will win the game. 
Now, after this minion goes, then the opposing opponent gets to attack with uh, with their minion on the battlefield, and you go back and forth making attacks until both players have used up all their minions there. Then you move on to the next battlefield, and the player without the initiative coin gets to go first in the second battlefield, and then the player with initiative will go first in the third battlefield. Um, so. Um, there's a real tactical element to the game. This is not just about which cards you're playing, but it's also about where you choose to play them, where you put your resources, and can you win two out of those three battlefields before your opponent can. Uh, so uh, this game has uh, it has the player boards, it has lots of beads and dice. Um, it's going to have a very high quality components, and of course, it comes with a ton of cards. This will be in a this will be in a large box set, um, and will be uh, kickstarted this fall, and probably in stores in first quarter of next year. Cool. Yeah, it looks very interesting, and I like the fact that you can create new decks out of a uh, few uh, sets of cards and still have a lot of replayability to uh, yeah, there's with the game. A ton of replayability and a lot of cool synergies like you, you get uh, each of these each of these uh, piles of cards has its own thing that it does and when you combine them with different groupings it creates a lot of interesting interactions uh, and you get those sort of cool interactions that you might see in constructed decks from trading card games but without any of the work or money that goes into putting that together so you can just very quickly throw together one of these decks yet they have all kinds of cool uh, things that they do a lot of cool synergies uh, for players to discover so the replayability is super high uh, and the gameplay is a lot of fun well thank you very much for showing me everything that you have here and really look forward to seeing the final product on this and the uh, success, hopeful success of your upcoming Kickstarter. Awesome. Thank you.